Hello, Daniel Usplin here, and I'm very pleased to announce that I have two really fantastic musicians joining me, Farad and Daniel. Good day, gentlemen. Hello. Nice to be here. Thursday night, you're going to be performing in Estevan, and for some of the people in our community, it's it could be the first time they hear the kind of music that you play. It's probably also going to be the first time that they see a Santur. And so, Farad, uh, can you just talk about the instrument a little bit and maybe then do a little demonstration? Sure. Um, yeah, so Santur is, a, is an instrument from the family of hammer dulcimers. So the instrument, I will, I will show it shortly, but it has these strings that are tuned like groups of four strings that are tuned to the same note. And then I have these tiny mallets that I hold in my, in my fingers and I hit the strings with these mallets and makes a beautiful resonating sound. The, the instrument is very old, like people from many different regions play similar instruments, like in, I've seen similar versions in China, India, Eastern Europe, many different countries, but it's a, there are some images and paintings that are like showing the people playing similar instruments in paintings that are about like from 500 BC or something. It's a pretty old instrument. So it's a very old instrument then. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Can, can, would you mind demonstrating just a little bit then? Sure, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I can seriously just hold the scent. I can I can hold the santor. No, it's so I, I can just it's okay. I, I prepared it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Sorry. 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 I was willing to hold the instrument. There we go. Yeah, this is an instrument. And so I use my wrist to hit the strings, and there are like two groups of strings these yellow ones I don't know if it's very clear there it's farther away and these white ones on this side and also there are these bridges that are movable and the other side is an octave higher so the instrument has three octaves like this is like middle C this C above and then it's two above that and so on and so forth so, You just have to tune it, and this side has some tuning. Um, I use this, um, this tuning uh, tool, kind of wrench, and I tune it like on this side using by turning this and changing the pressure on the strings. It's very similar to a piano, if you really think about it. Like inside the piano, there are these groups of strings, and you press a key, and a mallet hits the string. And then the speed of the key changes the speed, the volume of the notes. But here I'm holding two of those mallets with my hand. And I can do things that you can't really do on piano, things like, like a really fast tremolo. resonates that way pardon it's beautiful how it resonates that way yeah yeah it's a it's the box is this box is hollow um except for like a bridge underneath these so that uh, um can hold the pressure of the strings because these strings are under a lot of pressure these are like these white ones are of very steel and they're really, really tight, so they can really bend the surface if there's nothing under, but it's hollow and that's why it has a long resonance. The thing is, like, this one doesn't have a damper, or when you hit a string, it resonates for a long time. And there are, there are other, other countries, like Ukrainian versions, that some of them have, the, have a damper pedal that kind of damps the strings on the, on the corners, similar to piano, but 
Um, in the Iranian time tour version, I've never seen anybody having a damper pedal. This is the most common size and shape of the instrument. There are other versions that are bigger, to have more more notes and stuff, but this is the most common one that most of the people play. Well, fantastic. I'll get you to move your camera back, and I just have a couple of more questions for you guys. Now, I watched your performance at the Yardbird Suite with my son yesterday. He's a drummer, and Daniel, he was absolutely blown away by your style and also by your drum set, which is all the things that you had, like, compared to a standard drum set that most kids might get. You have so much going on, and he, he wanted to know, like, where do you get stuff like that? I love collecting a lot of my pieces, like like different bells and cowbells and things from from like antique shops and secondhand stores. Um, if I know I'm in a, in a place with like the, in a really rural area or like maybe a lot of you know um, iron kind of bells or or uh, things that were handmade, like on, on like I'm from southern Ontario and there's a lot of like Mennonite kind of country around there, so I got these great these great like you know made on made on the farm type cowbells that are really gnarly sounding and stuff and so just traveling for so i use a lot of those bells because they're not too loud but you can use them like a symbol um and the drums are yeah just like <laughs> mostly tambourines um but i'm a drum kit player uh at heart so it's getting whatever i can find and making it into sort of a drum kit setup <laughs> And with playing instrumental music, I assume you have a lot more freedom to kind of do what you want. But with your drumming style, are you adding in a lot of influences into the music or are you trying to keep it as traditional as possible? Well, when we when I started working, when we started working together, um, I don't play the, the, the tone back um, or, or like the, the daf, like which are the typical um, traditional percussion instruments in, in Persian music. I might play them a little bit, but not enough to feel comfortable enough to, to accompany this guy. So um, I'm actually influenced a lot by drummers from Sweden who are, who are uh, they accompany a lot of folk musicians there. And that's what actually my drum kit, if your son wants to check it out, there's really great drummers like Andrea Ferrari and uh, Petter Berndalen. Uh, Andre plays with Snarky Puppy and um Bocante and a lot of those groups and stuff so <clears throat> and i got really heavy into those into those drummers for a long time and that's where the tambourines come from that's where really that setup comes from so yeah i just try to learn the songs as much as i can and um and the melodies and then i'll try to match the melodies and then i'll do variations on it so so i don't know i don't i don't it's, it doesn't just i think this duo is not really about tradition as much as it is about we use instruments and that may have some history or have some sort of traditions associated with it, but uh, kind of playing with that a bit, making it a bit more contemporary sometimes. And that leads into my last question. Can you tell everyone about the music you're going to be performing in Esteban? Yeah, the well, the music I we play together. It's not as Dan mentioned. It's not really traditional Persian music. The instrument is very traditional, but uh, like there are, we're not playing any of the traditional Persian scales, and the, the tuning is very, is like very Western, is like a regular minor or major key. But of course, the music is influenced by Persian music in terms of the melody and the progression of the melody and things like that. But um, the music we will be playing, it's, um, it's my original music that from the two albums, mostly from the two albums we've released together, uh, one in 2017 and one in 2020. And, and we will be playing pieces from that. It's most, it, what I like to, when I write music, I think about storytelling through instrumental music. I love instrumental music and I like when the instrumental music has a story, even though everybody might have their own story about the piece, but I like to have some sort of a story behind it to give it some framework. And I think I've heard people say it's very sometimes cinematic, like in terms of the, it could be put on a movie because it has that kind of a story behind it. So I think that's what we're trying to bring 
to Estevan and and play like having a kind of a taking the audience on a journey in terms of their different life experiences and things like that if that makes any sense <laughs> Oh, it definitely does. And then aside from checking you guys out tomorrow, what's the best way to find you online and to pick up your two albums? Um, well, we will be bringing our, our CDs. If anybody has CD players <laughs> anymore, we can <clears throat> they can buy CDs. But we, our music is available on streaming uh, services like Spotify, Apple Music. And also you can check out my website, www.farhatkosravi, my first and last name, which is, I think, at the bottom of the page here, <laughs> .com. And yeah, you can, they can buy CDs there or on Bandcamp. Yeah, if you just Google my my name, they can they can find it. Well, and also YouTube, I'm looking course. forward to you. Well, yes, of course, that's where I saw your live performances. But yes, <laughs> I just want to thank the two of you for joining me for this interview. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, we're really excited to to play in Estevan. We've have a we've had a great time so far touring in Saskatchewan and can't wait to perform tomorrow. Thank you.